Namaste, we have Radha Podial today from Nepal. She's an author. She has received Madan Puraskar in 2014, and she has authored several books. And recently, she has published a book called Dignified Menstruation. Welcome, Radha Ji. Namaste, and thank you. So here we are today to talk about our book, Dignified Menstruation. So can you tell us a little bit about how it came about? Let me start from the word of dignified menstruation first. Mm -hmm. um, in other words, it is a dignity of the menstruators or dignified menstruation. The simple state of free from any kind of uh, stigma, taboos, abuses, uh, discrimination, restriction associated with uh, menstruation throughout the life of the menstruators. That means there is no difference between 25 days and five days in a month. Regards to discrimination. And also it's a very holistic concept. And um, uh, it, it refers from home to tomb. In some culture, it is, it is beyond the tomb as well. For example, in Nepal, the death ritual is different uh, between men and um, women because of the state of the menstruation. Because the menstruation considered as an impure, dirty, um, that is why they have the different kind of rituals. How does the power construct um, at the family? Since beginning or since uh, young childhood, uh, no matter whether you born uh, in US or Nepal or Philippines or somewhere in the world. It's not about the product. It's not about the infrastructure. It's not about the hygiene. It's about the dignity. You menstruate for the five days because of the taboo, the stigma, restriction, discrimination associated with this, you have been living with the feeling of dehumanization throughout the life cycle. Hey, so you have introduced a dignified menstruation, just not in Nepal. You have introduced the word and uh, concept and being able to give a name to it and validate it. And it, it's, it gives a validation to a lot of female that go through five days a month or during the menstrual period. Um, how the relationship changes even week to week, even the days of menstruation cycle inside the family and the relationship between the society and outer community. At some point, at some point, uh, the more than half of the population in this planet menstruate. Irrespective to class, caste, education, religion, region, the menstrual restriction or menstrual discrimination is happening or practicing across the globe with different name, forms, and magnitude. That is the principle. You uh, separate it for seven days. That is still happening in some parts of the country. And now, you are living in areas and still hesitate to go to the kitchen or temple. Yep. No matter whether you separate for seven days or you hesitate to buy the menstrual product in the market. There, we have to see the bottom line principle. Bottom line principle is the menstrual blood considered impure, dirty. The menstruation cycle is a normal phenomenon in female and it is much needed for a um, continuation of human being. Yeah. But we are not talking about freely and when there is a differentiation that exists in the house, there is a psychological harm, the girl the cause that is caused by unintentional or the restrictions that our community or our society or our culture has put in. And the female starts to feel she cannot speak out or ask questions and she feels low of herself. And the menstruation is not only the women's or private issue. We, we have to educate, simply educate our kids 
our our people globally the menstruation is natural phenomena but it is complex and multifaceted each girl has to educate in a way that she 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 feels so powerful and pride pride uh, being as a born as a girl at the meantime boys boys have to know the essence of the menstruation because of the menstruation he is he is in this universe if we able to establish this notion that gives the equality and that part is missing globally the girls feel assam disgusting shocking or dehumanized because of the menstruation right now and the boys Uh, consider themselves pure and privileged and this is very unequal it created it cultivated the gender norms and it also construct the unequal power relation and in that situation we cannot build egalitarian or equal society we keep talking equality 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 substantive equality but unless and until we are not ready to make a foundation it's not possible let me give the examples how can we talk about the hiv aids prevention and control without talking the menstruation those who cannot proudly talk about the menstruation do they Asks, oh, I have a um, unsafe um, uh, sex. Can I have this contraceptive, or can I do this kind of counselling? No, the 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 girls cannot decide about her body. She 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 don't know about her uterus, her uh, menstruation process. She cannot do for the safe abortion care or any kind of sexual or reproductive health care. or she cannot say no to her brother or partner or husband or she cannot challenge or question to her mom so she cannot live with the uh, with the dignity or with the peaceful environment so we need to focus on the on, on that part so i always said let's focus let's reflect what we are educating to our children it impact on the psychosocial or emotional health physical health um social cultural economical political um and um, environmental the even said the sustainable development goals and uh, it says the elimination of the child marriage uh, by the end of the 2030 without talking menstruation menstrual discrimination uh, how could we eliminate the um, uh, 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 child marriage because of the uh, menstrual discrimination um, the girls not only uh, behind in education or um, deprived from the quality education they also um, uh, trapped or encounter with varieties of the violences rape sexual abuse or even death let me give one example from kenya 14 years girl commits suicide uh, in september 2019 because she had a post menstruation in his school and her uh, um, teacher and um, um, friends uh, teased her and when she returned to home she commit suicide so we need to be very open very honest the un put the menstrual discrimination under the traditional harmful practices like child marriage fgm kind of thing the menstruation is not like the fgm female genital mutilation is not like the child marriage the half of the population of this planet has had to menstruate and it's not only about the menstruation the, the bleeding days or bleeding time like a reproductive age from uh, um, 10 to 12 years to 48 uh, 50 years matters because the power construction takes place uh, in between 6 to 12 years we have to go in that level for changing the narratives narratives around feminism development and women rights 
and we keep talking for last 72 years human rights declaration 72 years icpt conference beijing conference sdg we have so many international human rights covenants uh, but none of the covenants explicitly talk about the um, the need and priorities of the menstruation or they fail to recognize the complexity the multifaceted nature of um, biological phenomena of the menstruation of this of this planet this is missing and and the activities whatever have been doing this is good it created the space if someone distributing the menstrual cup or distributing the sanitary pad or pad man movie that created the space but if you see critically they establish the menstruation is a dot we keep talking about hygiene 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 it's there's a even before the menarche, the sexual differentiation or discrimination starts from home. And that's how the, that follows the female throughout her life cycle. And we have to be able to talk about it, ask for what we need. As you say, it's very sad and it probably is much in a higher, even in Nepal, I do not remember anyone talking or freely going to a store. If there's a male shopkeeper, a pharmacist, where you go to buy a menstrual highs and you would return home without buying it because you're too ashamed to ask for it, the things that you need. And even being shamed in school for a kid, I remember there were days, and probably it's the same with you and a lot of my female friends, we would hesitate to stand up and ask a question in the classroom, thinking you may have menstruated and there's a red dot in your skirt, so others will tease you. So that had stopped, that stops females from asking a question. So it's not just one aspect, it affects, as you said, throughout the life cycle, their early school dropout, failure in school, child labor, child marries, abusive relationship, domestic violence, or there is a childbirth, childbirth complication, death. Um, even after that, how it, 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 it is one of a emotional trauma that's ongoing. The whole discrimination against female is based, uh, it doesn't start to uh, that's the reason. That's the reason why I couldn't, we couldn't get rid of it because it is so ingrained in our culture and ingrained in our mind. And that's how we are groomed to think and believe. It takes a lot of work. So what can we do as a community? What can we do as a person to change this? Very simple. Dialogue. Keep talking. Keep talking. Wherever you are, you just keep talking. Mm. Uh, we need to reach out the all segment of the population. It, is start, it has to start from the individual level, individual level, then family level and community level, and it has to go global level. But I always believe the global level and the individual level have to start from their end, not wait up to the um, uh, global level. So global level also has to work on it and the individual also have to work on it. And we, we cannot imagine the very, the equal or elegant um, uh, society as we dreaming. This is the very, uh, this is the dream because the society is so dynamic and it, it, it's, it's, uh, we cannot control many things, but, but it, it, it is already proven that we can construct, reconstruct it. So how we able to change the narratives is very important. From impurity to purity, from women business to everyone business, from charity approach to holistic human rights approach, from five days building to life cycle approach and the, from gender policy to dignified menstruation policy. Today, um, I keep watching, talking with so many um, international and national forums and people, people are so much donor driven. 
they do not like to speak up they do not like to create the discomfort and they keep saying oh this is a cultural thing this is a link with the religion so we have to wait we, we the generation will take will change the generation takes place for change that kind of things keep going and i do not see to wait for the generation to talk about the dignified menstruation simply wherever you are if you are in office just put in, in your in your in your front desk uh, you are welcome um, uh, this is the dignified menstruation friendly desk or if you have anything anything related with the menstruation please feel free to ask me just just create the um, space for the menstruation keep keep doing the dialogue i'm i'm, I'm the men equally responsible to um, um, create the dialogue on dignified menstruation but they, but in some extent they don't have a courage they don't have a knowledge we assume that they have the knowledge but it's not true and globally the the activities um, which is happening across the globe around the menstruation is 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 not recognize the pain the struggle the passion the successes the stories from the ground often the activities based on the assumption misinterpretation let me give one example just recently people the people who are, who are from the global north they start to think about themselves just two days before i was talking with a friend from spain and they are, they are looking for the um, programs to talk about the uh, menstruation within their country nowadays they start to think it but earlier in many places even right now they, they only pointing to others oh these people are poor the people from asia and africa they are poor they are uneducated they they are practicing not in our backyard it's not our problem yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. We, we are fine we are totally fine that yeah. kind of mindset is working a lot when i was talking about the menstruation in the global forum i was alone and no one looked at me and few came and whispered and this is not time to talk that kind of comment i received it took so long time to create the space at the global level about the uh, dignified menstruation what about this book how was it created like uh, it took years and years of uh, hard work and advocacy and everyone coming together and yeah it's really really um, uh, difficult at first they are not ready to say that they have the that kind no, of situation right, right? acknowledge the issue that they yeah, have. yeah 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 absolutely and even the way they write in some point i just gave up because they are not ready to disclose everything from that country because there is no research the research also focus on uh the hygiene the product no one talk about the uh, human right perspective no one talk about the peace pros- perspective and that is why um, this book is just um, um is 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 not exactly what i wanted to uh, come up with in, in the beginning it's it's a start and now yeah is yes it this is start you it has the process has been started and gradually people will and so talking openly about menstruation and menstrual cycles and how it affected you so in the beginning i was thinking when i was quite young like 40 years back i was thinking it was only the problem with with my family because my family um, has a many girls and we are poor we are in living in the rural area that was my thought but later i knew that it was in my neighborhood as well and when i had a uh, uh, menstruation uh, when i was in high school i know more and when i came to kathmandu um, um, when i went to pokra for my um, uh, staff nurse course and i knew that oh my god it is everywhere in baglung in parvat in pokhara um, in 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 tanau everywhere and later i came to kathmandu for my bachelor degree and then um, the, uh, when i did the thesis on the same menstrual issue and then oh my god to um, the, the one menstrual cloth one one piece of cloth 
was used by mother in law daughter in law and the daughter or three people in a, three uh, women three layers of women in, 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 a month, in, in a month they shared the same rag same 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 piece of cloth and that was the very eye opening um, for me and later i knew when i started to do the literature review i knew the chaupadi then and also knew the practices in in africa in um, asia that time and uh, uh, when i started travel and when my way of thinking is uh, uh, is a little bit wider a little bit deeper and i started to talk with the people directly because i was speaking with uh, so many um, universities already in in uh, us in norway in, in uk uh, austria germany i keep talking right um, physically i i went there and then um, i, I did this small survey or um, sensing what kind of knowledge they have what kind of practice they have and it is everywhere but you don't find the research you don't find the um, evidences and that book is is whatever it is a very simple thing it's just the collection of the testimonies testimonies and it 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 is a reexamining our past and reimagining our future and based on that book many stakeholders will um, will do the research will do the will read define their strategies or their intervention and this is how we can um, contribute for prevention of sexual and gender based violence improve of sexual and reproductive health rights and promotion of the women right this is how this book is prepared but um, you you may read there uh, um, in nepal i i uh, uh, personally contacted more than 95% organization and the people um, those who are working on the peace human rights empowerment or directly menstrual activism it's they don't not our cause <laughs> yeah <laughs> they said this is not their cause and especially i had a very hard time to bring the um, pieces from africa uh, many friends many friends from um uh, global um, north they blame me uh, publicly in email in whatsapp group and in facebook that i am creating confusion uh, to the government to the media and to the stakeholders so so i'm i always inspire from challenges no there is always so, certainly yeah. this new concept it is a, a practice it is a practice that has been on for years and years but uh, it's a new approach and uh, and you are giving out this uh, idea about hey this is what's going on when we need to address and there will be ob obviously resistance for any new thoughts or new ideas or new changes like uh, what you are pointing at is hey it's happening right there in your family so nobody wants to say yeah it's happening in my family but yeah. you're basically asking people to reflect on their own behavior and reflect and change and there will be certain uh, uh, resistance and uh, yeah. i would recommend not to just dis get discouraged and keep working and fighting for advocating and you have come this far yeah we are not we are not we have a few friends few passionate friends there is always the hope as well and we just last december we completed uh, three days international workshop on dignified menstruation where we uh, had a um, theme menstrual talk dignity first where the uh, ministry of women children and senior citizen and national women rights commission and uh, six uh, organization were were uh, together with us and other 68 organization across the globe also extend their solidarities and it was in concluded with the triple points declaration and call for action and we are trying to reach out the other stakeholders um, um, with this declaration hey guys if you are um, uh, happy to to endorse this and picked up the few points to implement or incorporate into your ongoing programs and we will be speaking in global networks in different forums so uh, we hope this will be um, ignite uh, uh, moment uh, and we always um, if you see my personal life or my organizational trajectory it is always inspired from the challenges and 
it is very important to let people know why I put the dignity. Uh, because at the, at the age of nine, when I was about nine years old, I left home for, for um, attempting suicide because I did not see a single value um, to born as, uh, to live as a girl child because of the mental discrimination. My three sisters, my mothers, uh, were practicing so many restrictions uh, during that these days, and then I did I did not like to live is 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 a course from the girl is inferior is a dehumanization. It was so traumatic experiences, right? That is why um, I left home. And even when I had a first period or first menstruation that time, um, I ran away from the house for five days. So, so that time I did not know the word of the human right or advocacy or something like that, or even dignity. But when we are reflecting um, uh, the past, our past, it was the searching. It was a, it was a, um, a struggle for for searching dignity. And when I go through the stories from from other countries, it's like a, a Kenyan daughter uh, um, who commits suicide already, and then other colleagues. We all living with the demon, feeling of the demonization. That is why the dignity must be there. And no matter whether we are rich or educated or not, it is a virtue of human being, we deserve the dignity. And that is why the dignified menstruation or dignity of menstruators throughout the life cycle, this is how we come up with the idea. And this, I, I hope this is the new concept, um, uh, new, new shifting, um, uh, like uh, gender or uh, socialism, liberalism, postmodernism like this, this will be the uh, menstrual, uh, menstrual dignity will be the new theme, new paradigm saved and the uh, academia people, media, the um, NGOs, even will heard, uh, will, will hear it and then they will work on it. This is how we believe and we, we, we keep moving. We don't know where we will go, but uh, one day we'll, we shall overcome, I think. It, it takes years of doing and it, uh, you have created a lot of uh, awareness and you have been and your organization is working towards it and good luck and thank you so much uh, Ms. Baudel for coming over and sharing your experience and I'm so honored to have you in my show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I equally honored and um, pleased to be a part of your um, show. Um, hope we will work together again. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.